this is Ari from Heaviosity. In this video, I'm going to go over how to use Punish to add some growl and meat to a bass guitar track. I've put together here a quick rock, kind of alt-rock style track. Let's take a listen with all of the Punish effects on. Right now, I'm using Punish on the kick, the snare, the drum bus, also on the guitars and synth buses, as well as the bass guitar. I'll turn Punish off here on the uh, on the bass track, and let's take a listen again without it. You'll notice that the kind of body of the track drops off pretty significantly. Let's take a quick listen to the rhythm section. I'll uh, I'll start with the Punish off on the bass, and you can hear how the bass sits and how the drums sit, and then I'll bring it in, and you can hear how much it really kind of drives the bass into the track. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on with Punish on the bass track. Since I played bass with a pick, I wanted to tame some of the attacks a bit and bring up a little more punch and body to the track. There's three different types of compression available in Punish, which we go through in the demo walkthrough video and the overview video. Uh, for this one, I wanted to use the Classic Compressor, which provides a bit warmer, kind of vintage limiting amplifier style compression. You'll notice here that I've turned up the, uh, the high pass filter. What this does is it allows frequencies below this cutoff to pass through unaffected by the compressor. So it kind of prevents it from collapsing in on itself with the lower frequencies. To get the bass to really kind of pop and growl out in the track, I added a good amount of saturation. Since I was going for the rock, alt-rock kind of vibe, I went with the tube saturation model here. It gives it a really nice, warm, crunchy breakup to the sound without going too far. And just like on the, uh, on the compressor, I'm using the high-pass filter here at around uh, 115 hertz or so to allow the lower frequencies to pass through unaffected by the saturation. And since drive adds a whole bunch of gain to the signal, I've turned up the low makeup knob here what this does is it increases the gain of those frequencies below the high-pass filter knob, making sure that your overall output is pretty well balanced. To get even more out of the bass, I've turned up the sustain knob here in the transients. This helps kind of pump up the signal after that initial attack, bringing out the note just a little bit more. And at the end of the chain here, I made it a little bit brighter with the uh, EQ section, adding in about a dB or so of top end. You can use the EQ either pre or post. What this does is it switches to either the start of the signal chain or at the end. Since I'm driving it pretty heavily, I opted to brighten it up at the end. I've pre-programmed the punish knob here to control some of the parameters in saturation, transients, and the EQ section. Uh, I'm not going to go over how to do that in this video, but if you want to learn about that, you can check out the user manual or the overview video on our site. As more parts are added to the track, I wanted to make sure that the bass had enough drive and intensity to still pop through. Rather than automating all of the individual parameters, I simply automated the punish knob and then cranked it up just a bit more as the parts came in. And that's pretty much how you use Punish to, to really drive a bass sound. Check us out at heaviosity.com. There's a whole bunch more videos. There's user manuals and demos. Uh, and there's a 10-day trial period. You can download it and use it for free, fully functional. Thanks. Thanks.